This episode of Monsters: The Fever Man is strange, even if it is a bit make believe. The plot is set in the past and it revolves around a wealthy physician and a man with a sick daughter. The wild card is that a famed local healer is in town and he claims to be able to perform the healing trick, even though the affluent doctor is skeptical. This is a tragic narrative because it demonstrates that medication has a cost. The episode is dramatic with drama and twists, but it's most noteworthy for Dick Smith's makeup job as the monster, which looks horrific in my opinion. As the boozed-up old-timer McCullum provides one of the greatest performances in the entire series. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Monsters: The Fever Man, Tales from the Pole Side. The series begins with the Fever Man. A grim tale about a healer who, in exchange for a large sum of money, heals incurable people for whom medicine has failed, but at a much greater price. The series is incredibly low budget, yet this episode is, despite the constraints imposed by a lack of funds. The idea is intriguing. The plot is well written and has a powerful message, and the characterization is exceptional for a 20-minute film. The episode does have a disturbing, gloomy mood, and the setting is modest but powerful. It's a straightforward tale. Timothy Mason is in a dire situation since his daughter has a potentially deadly fever, for which no doctor has a treatment. He searches for the Fever Man, a relatively famed figure who can heal any fever for a hefty fee and has lived for hundreds of years. Dr. James Burke pursues him, unable to give a treatment but outraged by the idea of a distressed father resorting to what he deems quackery to save his dying daughter. I mean, isn't it possible that someone will consider the sentiments of genuine doctors? What an inconsiderate person. As you could expect, the Fever Man is keen to help, but Burke has to interfere and completely destroy everything. Going ahead with the story, Mr. Mason, a distressed family man in the Victorian period, sends his ailing daughter to an unconventional healer known as the Fever Man, against the protests of his regular physician, Dr. Burke. In The Fever Man, the first episode of Monsters, Burke's fears about Fever Man, Mr. Boyle, appear justified at first, given that he is a cranky, ill-mannered drunkard. When Mr. Burke interrupts with Boyle's ritual to heal the Mason girl, he is taken aback to discover the truth. The Fever Man fights each ailment he comes across in lethal physical warfare and the girl's fever manifests as a blabbery, metastatic tumor, monster in this case. When Burke's intervention results in Boyle's death, the Fever Man orders the conventional physician to take his place and murder him. The central theme of the first tale is the deeply established belief in our culture that only medical science can cure the ill and that anything other or from any other system is quackery. Dr. Burke, for example, is dismissive and skeptical about Boyle's method to cure the ill in The Fever Man, even calling him a trickster. He is concerned because Mason is being duped. He also inquires about Boyle's willingness to return Mason's money if he dies. Burke sometimes refunds his money when his patients die, he asks. Boyle's retort is spot on. It's implied that they're both physicians, but their approaches are different. In some ways, this appears to become a subliminal acknowledgement of the East-West dichotomy regarding how things are done. When Burke realizes this, the story achieves its pinnacle and he is confronted by a horrific and unforgettable monster, the first one in the series stable. In this scenario, the Mason girl's fever is shown as a gigantic, meaty, obese creature large and strong, and understands how to attack but not defend, as Boyle puts it. The key to eliminating it is to go all in, which Boyle does in the end. He wrestles the monstrous tumor-covered illness to the ground, snapping its neck. Doctors wage fight with their patients' ailments daily, but it's amusing how this monstrous episode depicts that battle as a real-life physical contest in which the doctor has just as much blood in the game as his patient. Indeed, the fever man is, in some ways, is all about Burke and how he goes from being set on his ways, committed to tradition and routine, to ultimately breaking free to save a life. The Fever Man is a set-in-his-ways doctor who opens his mind to new ideas, new therapeutic routes, and a new way of looking at the world. Why you should watch it A skeptic tries to show his frantic buddy with a sick kid that the local famed healer he wants to meet is a cone artist. A father sends his ill daughter to the fever man, a man famed for physically fighting sickness or fever to treat the sick. The local doctor, on the other hand, objects. 
The sum that the fever man demands from the man is far less than the price the fever man must pay himself and when the doctor intervenes, he discovers the true cost of a life. The variety of guest performers and actresses that paraded through the show's dinkus most set every week was, in insight, the most intriguing aspect of the show. Future talents like Steve Buscemi, Matt LeBlanc and Rob Morrow mingled alongside veteran actors like Linda Blair, Pam Grier and Will Wheaton. It's always amusing to see a recognizable face out of context. Joey Tribbiani debating with Wesley Crusher about how the eerie old barbershop is actually a vampire sanctuary is a nice laugh. Frank Gorshin and Darren McFadden, David Spade and Jerry Stiller are among the other famous guest stars. This anthology series has no recurring characters because each 21 minute installment is self-contained. Based on the show's opening sequence, the first episode is a macabre spin of all American families selling down in the front of the boob tube just in early for their favorite show. Should be cheesier. The Fever Man appears to be an exception in the sequence, but this isn't the case, as we'll see later. It's only that the tone is solemn with no attempt of humor. Everything is performed in its entirety, from the discourse to the impending threat. It's risky to start the series with a historical narrative, but the Victorian setting instantly provides an atmosphere. The sepia color scheme conjures up memories of a bygone era with antiquated attitudes and customs. The mythos about faith healers battling diseases bodily manifestations is a fabrication. Fear of a man may be made up, but quackery isn't. While fighting the devil that is causing the child's illness, the fever man clashes with the contemporary doctor, Patrick Garner, who naturally doubts his tactics. Of course, it was simpler to persuade someone that their illness was caused by evil rather than infections back then. The episodes are short, clocking in at around 22 minutes each, making it simple to get caught up on the collection. They are on a very even keel in terms of plot, with a few exceptions. They frequently include some really well executed special effects and makeup that one would not anticipate from such mass produced, non serialized material. They may not be on par with HBO's Tales from the Crypt series from the same period, but I'm sure they weren't made on the same budget. Monsters is an underappreciated asset that many people have forgotten about. This re release of the entire series is a great way to reconnect with an old friend while also introducing it to a young generation who may have missed it when it first aired. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks, everyone. Between the eyes.